All right, I think I will start. Welcome, everybody. Um, let me first start with uh, a little introduction to myself. My name is Dominic Nijboer, and I am a UX designer at Dictu. Uh, Dictu is a governmental organization at the Ministry of Economic Affairs. At Dictu, I organize design sprints and also do interaction design, visual design, and perform user tests. And uh, today, I hope to give you all a bit of inspiration on how to tackle UX problems in a fun and fast method called the design sprint. <clears throat> I won't uh, go into too much detail, and I will not tell you how to do a design sprint exactly. We don't have that much time, and there is, of course, a book written about it and uh, tons of articles of all kinds of ways to perform a design sprint. I also want to suggest to any organization or people to test an experiment and see what works or what is the funnest to work with. Uh, while a design sprint is about solving problems within a short amount of time, I also believe it's supposed to be fun. It is supposed to create an atmosphere of working together to one common goal. If you can manage that, then you're halfway there, in my opinion. So let me first give you a bit of um, history on why we at Dictu have decided to use a design sprint uh, for our design thinking method. Well, this might be a familiar story to some, but like in many organizations, UX was a very small focus point of building applications at Dictu. Building the actual application was. Today we live in an agile world, but Agile thinking is hard. We want to build perfect product from the start. Clients usually think long and hard about what they want and need, and they add more features than a product probably needs. And designers design on best practices and what they believe will work. So clients add ideas and designers design and developers develop. In the Netherlands, we have a saying uh, that is called throwing it over the wall. One group of people do one thing, and they throw it over to the other without really knowing the context or background of the previous group. We just do what we are supposed to do. We pretend we do agile, but, we, but our mindset is still waterfall. I, I believe that most people want to know why. Why are we making this product? What problem is it supposed to solve? I believe people want to be involved, get a connection with the product we are building so that we are making better products simply because it becomes part of an idea that is a contribution of multiple views and perspectives so that all who are involved feel like they contributed to something meaningful. So we arrived at doing a design sprint, but what is a design sprint? I consider a design sprint, sprint a design thinking method. It has all the ingredients, uh, but on overall it's fast paced. A design sprint consists of a group of people working together to gather ideas to create solutions. The team is an important factor in the sprint. If you have a sprint with like-minded people with the same backgrounds, it won't be as effective as when you have a team with different perspectives and background. For example, at Dictu, we have a facilitator, a designer, and a developer that we bring to the, from the develop team. From the clients, it's really a question of who knows most about the project, who knows the target audience, the organization, uh, who can give us the most information on the client side's perspective. What is important though, is that there is somebody that is allowed to make a decision as part of the team. You don't want to do a lot of work, test, see that it works only for somebody to dismiss it because he just doesn't like the idea get a decision maker. It is important. In total, the team shouldn't be bigger than seven to eight people. And eight is pushing it. With this team, we have a nice little brain, brain trust to solve big problems in a record time, all with their own roles and focus that can, can contribute in their own way. All right, when the team has been put together in an Ocean's Eleven kind of way, Let's go through the different assignments or phases to go through so that we can make something amazing. I call them phases instead of days. Uh, in the actual design sprint, it is an idea that you do it within a week. So every day is a different assignment. And it's great if it works, but it isn't always perfect. 
sometimes planning an agenda makes this the most difficult part of, the, of actually doing the sprint. So we want to be flexible, but not too flexible. What is important is to create momentum. Don't do one phase of the sprint only to do another one two weeks later. People are seriously easy to forget important aspect of the sprint in a short amount of time, and you're just wasting precious time. We start with uh, deciding the scope of the sprint. I call this the mapping phase. What we are trying to build, what problems are we trying to solve? What should our focus be for this sprint? The idea is that everybody gets the same perspective and starting point. And this is also where we define our sprint goal so that our focus during these sessions is clear. There are different kinds of methods to ascertain the information that you need. You can do, for example, the stakeholders interviews to get a grasp on how the organization looks at the problem or do user testings when there is already a product and you want to see how a user goes about using the product. These interviews shouldn't last longer than 30 to 45 minutes with around four to five people. This is purely to get data and information, but this is not your standard interview. When you hear something interesting or important, put it on a sticky note. At the end of the session, place all the sticky notes on a wall so that everybody can see the information. Cluster the information and create categories. You will get a grasp on what is important and what the focus should be about. At the end of the mapping, we will define a couple of how might be questions. These questions are our directions, our way of thinking about a solution. If you've done the mapping correctly, then you have a sprint goal plus loads of information that add to map out the problem and give directions towards the solution. Everybody knows what is going on, and this will make the next part easier. The next phase is where we sketch out our ideas. We know what is going on. We understand the situation. Now let's draw out some solutions. Pick an how might we question you as a team want to solve for the first round. All right, so let's back up a little minute. Brainstorm sessions are hard. There are loud people and silent people and when these people join in a group, some voices won't be heard and others probably a bit too much. So to not be affected by other people's opinions, we first work out our solutions alone. We call this working together alone. For the most part, <clears throat> all of your ideas are yours. At Dicta, we start off with a brainstorm session, come up with ideas, write them down or draw them out. It's all fine, but don't share them and don't talk about them. After that is done, you can sculpt your masterpiece, draw out a storyboard of your solutions. Consider these sketch out customer journeys. Again, don't share it and don't talk about it. After the time is done, that will be your moment. With much grandeur, you will uncover your piece of art to the rest of the group. To keep the discussions short, we start off by voting. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> to keep the discussion short, we start off by voting. We first do always do a silent vote. Uh, we are to believe that a great idea does not need an explanation, but a bad drawing might. So we have two rounds: one with ex without explanation, and one with explanation. By being inspired by each other's viewpoints, it is my experience that we often learn from each other instead of arguing too much. And we make faster and better decisions. And it ends up, and it ends up feeling like a group effort. We usually do about three to four rounds of these how might be questions. And if we made our decisions and it is clear what we need to prototype, that is when we go over to the next phase. The prototype phase. This is the place where the team kind of splits up. Uh, the UX designers at DIG2 usually get busy making the prototype. For the programs, we usually use Figma, but it really doesn't matter what tool you use. Figma, Sketch, Adobe XD, they're all great. Well, but we do want to make is a middle fidelity design. This means make something that feels real. 
one lesson that we learned is that it is extraordinarily important to pre-trial your prototype because mistakes are made easy. And when a prototype doesn't work, when you're testing it with real users, that's when everything falls apart. But before you start off making the prototype, you have to write out the scenarios. What do you actually want to test during these user tests? What, what is the flow that we want to work out? But not only the flow that makes the perfect, uh, perfect line, but also so um, that a user can make mistakes. These will give a good idea of what screens will be needed, but you will also need them for the last phase. User testing is when it all comes together. We've mapped out the situations, we thought about amazing solutions, and even made some important decisions together. Now we will see if it all works. But I don't consider this phase to only be about testing our ideas. This is also a great time to see what the user needs. Are we on the right path? Is this the right direction? Did we understand our users correctly? Nothing tells a story better than visuals, and nothing tells a user more about what he wants and doesn't want if he can't ex can experience it. This means that not only seeing what a user does or what kind of problems he walks against, it also means that a user has to think out loud, uh, tell what, he, what he's noticing, what goes wrong, what goes great, uh, but also give us overall feeling. What is he missing? What is, it, is the visuals nice? Is the color great? These are all important uh, information to get uh, to uh, to get to a product that we want to build. So after we have gathered the data from the users, it is time to evaluate the results. Do we have enough information to go to a version 1.0, or do we need to go back to the drawing table? In my opinion, an application is never finished. So you want to keep doing these kinds of sessions on a regular basis. Maybe in next time it will be shorter because there is less to go through. But you iterate the process. This means that we usually work towards a product that is certain enough to be built. But even when the product is made, to always evaluate and improve. That is what design thinking is about. And that is how a design sprint can help you get there. So this was uh, for the, this was my presentation about doing a design sprint uh, and how it can help us make better products in a short amount of time, but also do regular tests. If you're interested in doing a design sprint, uh, there are a couple of places that you can go. For example, you can read the book by Jay Knapp. It's I think it's a great book. It's also an easy read, <clears throat> and the. The chapters are defined by the days. Um, but you can also go to the YouTube channel of AJ and Smart. They are specialized in doing design sprints. They have a lot of different ways uh, you can do a design sprint. Uh, for, I, show, I just showed you pictures about doing a design sprint uh, live, which in my opinion is a much funner way to do it because we're all together. But uh, right now it's a little bit difficult because we're living in a corona uh, situation. And so we have to think about doing a design sprint remote. And there are a couple of different approaches to do it. AJ and Smart has a couple of nice tutorials about how to do it. Uh, we had Dick to use Mural as a board to, uh, to get ideas. And the sketching is usually done separately uh, as a homework to do it uh, so that we can discuss it on a later day. So, so even in this uh, corona situation, it's still possible to do a design uh, design sprint. Uh, I believe that it can create uh, nice and, uh, and beautiful products. And that was my presentation. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions uh, coming. Well, if there aren't any questions, then uh, I want to close off my uh, 
my 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 presentation. Uh, if you're interested about doing a design sprint and want to know more, or maybe you have some ideas about how to do it, I love to spar with you. Uh, you can reach me at my LinkedIn, uh, Dominic Nijboer, and uh, maybe we can discuss about it. I hope you all enjoyed it, and thank you for your time. <laughs>